Welcome to this edition of Access Together. These shows are made possible through the combined efforts of Shelby County Schools and GHS-TV. The shows are hosted by the members of the community and utilize the staff and facilities of Germantown High School. If you would like to watch our live stream or get more information about these shows, log on to our website, ghstv.org. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the following presentation. Welcome to Inspiring Leaders. I'm Donna Chandler Newman, your host for our show, and thank you for watching our program. Through this show, we meet community leaders and we examine how they're using their unique talents and skill sets to make a difference. And through our discussions, we hope to inspire others to discover and to share their own leadership abilities for the overall betterment of our community. Now, today's show features the Ave Maria Home, a 60-plus-year-old organization whose tagline serving seniors enriching lives clearly describes their focus and the work they do within our community what's captivating about this organization is how they've evolved over the past 60 years and how they continue to evolve to keep pace with the changes in our aging population truly ave maria home makes a profound difference within the lives of the individuals and the families that they touch and I think you'll be particularly amazed to learn about their rich history, their notable work today, and their future plans for our very fortunate community. Now, during this first segment of our show, we'll meet Frank Gattuso, Executive Director of Ave Maria Home. And during our second segment, Frank and I will be joined by Martha Podesta, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Ave Maria Home. Joining us now, Frank Gattuso, Executive Director of Ave Maria Home. Welcome, Frank. Oh, thank you for having us. We appreciate this. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. Now, full disclosure, you and I have known each other for quite a while, haven't we? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you went to Christian Brothers High School and then Christian Brothers University, and you and I served on the alumni board together at Christian Brothers University. Right. Let's not talk about how long ago that was. <laughs> All right, we won't be very exact, <laughs> but do tell me about your background and how you became involved with Ave Maria. Well, um, I started out uh, working on my master's uh, at the University of Memphis, uh, Memphis State then, and uh, I did an internship at St. Peter Villa, just to give you a little background, and that was around 1990. Um, and so in 1995, I joined Ave Maria and have been there ever since. And it's been a great experience. Um, we have had a wonderful board that allows uh, the opportunity to expand into new services and to really look at the aging population and, and what can we do to really help people. And that's what it's all about. And expand you have, but first, let's talk about the history. Tell me about the rich history of Ave Maria, because it goes back 60 plus years. Absolutely, it, in 1950, a group of ladies, uh, they formed the Ave Maria Guild, and uh, their objective was to raise money and funds for a home for seniors at that time, in the mid 50s, and so, uh, by 1955, they had raised um, several hundred thousand dollars, enough to build um, a home out in, and back then, it, I mean, it was Bartlett, but very rural and um, a lot of pasture land. And uh, they bought nine acres on Charles Bryan Road and uh, built a small home for 35 seniors. And we've been going and growing ever since. <laughs> yes, you have, you really have. Well, what is the stated mission of Ave Maria? Yeah, our mission is simply to care for elders uh, at the you know high point of their life and help them and provide really a dignified and way to you know if case they need to go to the next world, uh, we're going to do that for them. Um, but we you know we provide care every day to over 300 seniors, and that's our real mission is just to make sure that we're providing the services that they need at whatever level of care they need. And so you have really evolved over time, haven't you? I mean, it started out as just a nursing home for 35 people, and you just said 300. Tell me about that evolution. Right, uh, it opened in, again, 1956 with, for 35 seniors. Uh, in 1970, um, another uh, 40 were added uh, and brought that number to 75. Mm -hmm. And then um, in 19, 99, we opened an assisted living facility um, serving 65 additional seniors. 
Uh, we also opened an adult daycare program. We've, you know, it's funny how that evolved because so many people, you know, really said, you know, we need some help during the day. Uh -huh. And so that's why we saw the need for the adult day center. And so we've also um, just in the last 10 years opened a non-medical home care program serving seniors all over Shelby County in their home doing you know, activities of daily living. And you and to the nursing home you added rehab, didn't you? Right, we've, we've added uh, rehab just for folks who need to, you know, if they've fallen, broken a hip or need some uh, therapy, uh, we're working on that now and getting ready to open those uh, new greenhouse homes. All right, so talk about the greenhouse homes. Well, we're excited. Uh, we've got uh, greenhouse homes where 10 or 12 elders will live in each home. Uh -huh. and, and the home is set up for just for rehab because the things that they want to return, if they want to return to their home, our little cottages are set up just for that. They can get physical therapy, occupational and speech therapy, mm -hmm. but they can also practice working in a kitchen or doing their laundry, uh, making meals, and, and they have their own schedule, which mm -hmm. is just ideal. So they can actually do what they need to to understand how to go back and live on their own. Correct. 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 You know, um, I had always thought of Ave Maria as the place where Catholics went to nursing homes, but that's not true either. It, that's pretty much a misnomer, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. We, the majority of our individuals we serve are not Catholic, um, but the thing that we really try to focus on is also the spiritual side. We have a deacon on our staff who uh, does a lot of pastoral care with our elders, and that means so much. Mm -hmm, it really does. So it's kind of a holistic approach? Absolutely. That's what we try to make sure that we're meeting all of our seniors' needs wherever those needs need to be met. Okay, gosh. And so you have, I know that you said on Sunday you do have services for Catholics, but you have... We have a non-denominational service as well, uh -huh. and uh, we have a, uh, folks from the community that come in and provide that. And so, again, most of the folks that live on our campus are not Catholic. So when you talk about this, and it's a holistic approach, I guess you're talking about not just their spiritual, but their physical. Are you making sure they get exercise and that their brains continue? Tell me about a typical day. Uh, well, it starts with breakfast, of course. Um, and then each elder, um, because we have gotten so patient-centered on our care, can really choose how they want their day to go. But we offer an activity program, an exercise program um, where that they can do mid-morning, have lunch, and then they can certainly choose options on, hey, I just want to read my newspaper, or I just want to read a book, or they can participate in other activities. And of course, everybody's favorite activity is bingo, but, <laughs> but there's a lot of hand-eye coordination that goes with that, so that's a good one. Oh, that is a good one, actually. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, don't you also have pet therapy? Oh, absolutely. We have different uh, organizations that bring in pets uh -huh. and it just enriches everyone's life. Um, and the pets that we have, are the majority are dogs, but, and they're just so tame and they just, the elders love it. So they're docile and they, they right. can pet them and nobody's mm -hmm. biting anybody or no, anything? No, no, it's all good. I see. <laughs> I see. So you basically are working on their mental agility as well as their physical? And they're spiritual all. Right. So as a senior, it's a pretty good place to go. But let me ask you, if I were evaluating where someone should go, what differentiates you from other organizations like you? What makes you very different? Um, I think really in that it seems like we're a large organization, but actually when it comes right down to it, we're very small. And the, our staff, they really get to know the elders and our seniors, and to me, that coupled with our spiritual, our pastoral care department, we really focus on individuals and, and we get to know them and we get to know their families mm -hmm. and we encourage family involvement. I think that's very important um, because we want everybody to be a part of the Ave Maria family. And, and in the end, we even uh, provide funeral services. We've had, uh, it's interesting, we've had more people say, I want our funeral to be right here at Ave Maria because we have a chapel where we can do that. And it's just, it really gives closure to not only the elders' friends, but also for the staff. 
Well, you know, that's interesting you mentioned that because I actually went to a funeral out there and it was for one of our non-Catholic friends who had uh, his father there. And his father was from Arkansas and at the end of his life, his friends were completely at Ave Maria. But it, it stunned me to see the staff come and think so much of him and speak as well. How attached do the staff members get to your clients? Oh, I, I think very attached. I, whether they're there a month or, or five years, um, our staff really try to make sure that they're meeting that individual's needs, and that's what we really value so much. Mm -hmm. So that's actually another reason to choose you. It is a holistic approach, but you have a caring staff, and that can't be hired, you know? It, right. Or you can't pay somebody to be right. um, we, caring. Right. We do a lot of education and training with our staff, and, and particularly try to focus on that social, uh, physical, and spiritual side, but we do a lot of training with uh, through the Catholic Health Association. They have a lot of good information, and so our staff really benefit from that. You know, Frank, you've been there 23 of the 60 plus, what, 62 years that the uh -huh. organization's been there. That's a very large percentage of the time. What's the biggest change you've seen there? Um, I think uh, really the level of care um, from the standpoint of um, it's not only long-term care, but there are so many individuals needing not acute services, but day services and our non-medical home care. I mean, just to be able to have the opportunity to go out and service uh, individuals in the community is just phenomenal. And they're all ages. I mean, they're not only seniors, but they're also individuals who are disabled in some way who need, who need assistance. Well, that is uh, it's a very fine uh, way to approach it, too. I guess I didn't realize that some of them weren't even seniors. That's Right. Uh, we have some individuals who live at Ave Maria who are, are not really what we would call elderly. Uh -huh. uh, and so, um, anyway, it's just a blessing that we're able to serve them with, with, if they need that help. How do you define success? How do you know when Ave Maria has succeeded? Um, it really, Donna, it's... When I get calls from individuals who have had their, their mother there or another family member and they say, oh, I've got a friend who needs your help. And so when we get those, as we would say, a word of mouth call, that's, that's the greatest compliment we could, we could ever achieve. It's got to be one of the most rewarding things that you could possibly have. Well, that makes us know, I mean, it ensures that, you know, hey, we're doing a good job and we want to be able to continue doing that for whoever we have the opportunity to serve. You know, this is like a calling for you. I've got to tell you that when I think of Ave Maria, it equals Frank Gattuso. So um, I, I think you do absolutely excellent work for our community, and I'm delighted that you do. Thank you so much for that. Will you stay for a moment? Because I believe your board of directors chairman is going to join us. That would be great. We'd love to talk with Martha. All right, good. Yeah. She'll be right okay. here. Okay. All right, okay. thank you so much. Sure. And we're going to pause now for a short break. When we return, Frank and I will be joined by Martha Podesta, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Ave Maria Home. I wish I was in school. If only I had a math test today. I'll stay after class. I'll clean the chalkboard. I wish I was in school. School ends, but free lunches for your kids don't have to. Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash summer meals for help. Hello and welcome to Cable Quiz. The academic Do you know how incredible it is to work at a TV station in high school? GHS TV is a student-run television station. There's so many things you can do here at GHS TV. You can be in front or behind the camera or both. You have that opportunity. There are no limits. We have sports and we have news and we have entertainment. So the students here get a well-rounded view of what it's like to be in the TV field. It's my life. It's what I want to do. From all of us here at GHS TV, Thanks for starting your morning with us. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775.
You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back. We're pleased to continue talking with Frank Gattuso, Executive Director of Ave Maria Home, and to be joined by Martha Podesta, Chairman of their Board of Directors, as we continue learning more about the excellent work of Ave Maria Home. Thanks for staying with us, Frank, and welcome, Martha. Thank you. I'm so glad you're with us today. Now, Martha, if I'm not mistaken, your real job is uh, you teach middle school and high school math at yes. Concord Academy. I do. Right? I do. That's my real job. Well, okay, so this is your volunteer position. There yes. are some 3,000 organizations in the area to become associated with, with time, talent, and treasure, and you've chosen Ave Maria Home. How and why? I chose Ave Maria when my dad needed elder care. And so that was about eight and a half years ago. I found myself out there every day and just watching the fabulous work that they did. And then Frank asked me to join the board about seven and a half years ago as the only board member who had a family member there. So I brought a different perspective to the board and to that group of individuals. And so I've, my father's been deceased six years and I'm still there every day and you still feel the importance of the organization. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now why? Talk to me about why they're different. Because, <clears throat> well, first of all, didn't you vet a number of homes Oh, first? I looked at every home in Memphis, and I had promised my dad I would never take him to a nursing home, uh -huh. but he was a big man, was having strokes. I couldn't take care of, any more of him anymore, which is a sad thing to admit that you can't take care of someone. Mm -hmm. But when I went out to Ave Maria, it was the quality of care every single time. Every. And I was there a lot. I would wake up at 3 in the morning and drive out there, and he would be in his pajamas and taken care of. And the, the people that took care of him got to know him as well as I did. They knew what he liked, what he didn't like, and they were amazing. That's, that's why I chose Ave Maria, and that's why I'm still part of this organization. And so, like Frank and I were talking about earlier, it's the staff. To a it's large the degree. staff. It's absolutely the staff. You can't pay people to care, you know. No, they it's, have it's to totally genuine. Uh -huh. They all came to my father's funeral. When I go out there, they're still excited to see me, and that's that's really nice. And toward the end of his life, you had told me about an experience that you and your family had there. Would you we like to stayed. Share? My father was the second elder to move into the greenhouse. There's four of them that are exist that are already open now. We're opening five more. My father was the second resident to live there. And he had this massive stroke. And one of the ladies called me and said, Martha, this one's different. You need to come out here. They knew him well enough to know that. I s slept on that sofa. They would have coffee for me in the morning. For seven days, I never left. And it was like my home. It was people were bringing us food there like you do, like Southerners do. Mm -hmm. it, that's what Ave Maria was. It was his home and everybody was visiting us there, and it was wonderful. And they were accepting of all that? Oh, beyond accepting. I didn't need, I, there was nothing that hospice could offer me that they weren't already doing. So I declined hospice because I had these fabulous women there to help me so, every day. So the greenhouses, I know that when I first heard that term, I was kind of curious about what that meant exactly. I don't know if we're describing them well enough. We're not. Okay, you, so, we're not. so let's describe. Well, it's not an environmental thing. A greenhouse really got the term because at the end of your life, you still have something to give back. You're still blooming. That's the greenhouse concept. And they have 10 elders. They all eat together. They all have their own bedroom. They all have their own bath. It's just a different way of living. It's they are on their own schedule. My father liked cheese grits. He's the only one. Every morning, he got cheese grits. He didn't have to be showered by 7 o'clock to get to breakfast at 8. He was on his own schedule. There's one woman that didn't like breakfast, so she had brunch at 11 every day. Very individualized care for every elder. Yeah, I think when you were telling me about it, Frank, I think what you said was it's not institutionalized, it's more home-like. Correct, right. All the federal and state regulations are pushing us to, pushing long-term care to be a more home-like environment. Uh -huh. Well, the only way to, to really do that is to create a, a home uh -huh. and not an institution that may have a plant or this or that. So our board members really have, have pushed it and, and I think 
um, for us to have getting ready to open five more greenhouse homes in that all these homes are centered on those 10 or 12 elders that live in that home and that just makes a world of difference and for their families to be able to come and visit in a very relaxed and social atmosphere uh -huh. it just makes a huge difference in that elders life and you're really the only ones in this area that are this far along in this process aren't you correct and so that's a really good thing but let's talk about I mean that's got to be expensive there's got to be a big price tag let's talk about your funds and as board president you know a lot about this I'm sure and I'm sure you rely on Martha a lot for that as well oh, er, all the time <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't let Martha go too far um, so let's talk about your funds you raise two different kinds of funds right you I think you described them as operational and brick and mortar talk about right. operational first how do you raise your funds Sure. Um, from an operational standpoint, um, we are, you know, really at the uh, whatever Medicare and Medicaid is going to reimburse us for those services that we provide. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are keep us operating. But where Martha comes in handy, and I'll let her talk about, is really raising money. Uh, the government doesn't give you money for brick and mortar. And to build a greenhouse is very expensive. So we just recently raised a lot of money to, rate, to build five greenhouses. But it's all, not only the greenhouses, if you have an elder who's there and whose husband or whatever worked their whole life thinking they were gonna be taken care of and they run out of money, we take care of them. We don't just put you on the street because you can't pay anymore. So it's not just the brick and mortar, it's not just you know, the day-to-day, -day. It's, it's taking care of elders when they run out of money. And people are living a lot longer and they're running out of money. So <coughs> if I had an el elderly loved one, one of the questions I should be asking when I'm looking at various homes is what do you do when my parent runs out of money? Exactly. And the answer right. from many of them is go find someplace else. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's the answer you're going to get most of the time. And, and that's the other part of what Martha and our board is trying to do is raise funds for an endowment where we can take care of people in the long term and not rely on or not, and not worry about them running out of money. Yeah. And I think that's an important piece as, uh, with, as you know with interest rates being so low, everybody's pretty conservative when you get to be 80 or 90. Yeah. And, and so with your money and anyway, it's just, it's something that we've taken on as a mission. Well, and a lot of people have run out of money because mm -hmm. we're the sandwich generation, right? The ones that took care of our elders and our children at the same time. So you find many people in the generation that are aging now have to have run out of money, mm -hmm. right? Right. No matter how well they worked and how much they saved. So um, that's really a, a great cause. Mm -hmm. um, these greenhouses, are we going to continue with them? Well, we've got five more getting ready to open, and so our all of our uh, long-term care and rehab uh, facilities will be in, in these greenhouses, and so we're very excited about that. But we depend, from what you're saying, to build these and to maintain these and to keep people after they run out of money, you depend on donations, a exactly. lot of donations. Who donates to you? Who are your contributors? A lot of times it's the people who we have served. It's their families that give back to us. And I think that's another way Frank was saying a phone call from a friend recommending. A lot of times it's that. A lot is people in the Memphis community that recognize the work that we do. Uh -huh. So that's another way that we get a lot of donations. And you also run a couple of events. One of them you're about to run um, at the beginning of, of this month, mm -hmm. in the beginning of April. So um, we that have, was... The, we have a concert. We have a spring concert and silent auction which is April 7th, uh -huh. and so we always, and then we also in the fall have a gala where we recognize three or four people in the community that have been really generous in their time, talent, and treasure to Ave Maria, so we highlight those people. So I those see. are our big two events that we do every year. And at the, you have a, besides the gala, you have a golf tournament associated with that, do you not? Yes, we do. Right. Yeah, that's right. called the... Uh, Father Oglesby. Oglesby, Oglesby uh-huh. Uh -huh. Golf and tournament, right. He has a funny story behind him, doesn't he? He was the pastor? Well, right. When when uh, St. Anne's uh, in Bartlett was being constructed, he really didn't have anywhere, they didn't have a rectory for him, and so Ave Maria was in the process of opening, and so he was actually the first resident 
Uh, he was all, always claimed that he was the first resident of Ave Maria, <laughs> but it was just because he didn't have anywhere else to live. <laughs> well, I'm glad y'all were able to give him a home. You know, um, as a Catholic, a lot of times I've assumed that Ave Maria was floated by the Catholic Church, and that is not so. You yeah. are a standalone nonprofit. Correct. Right. You're right. exactly right. right. So we are, you are heavily dependent upon us particularly donations. So Heavily dependent on that, yes. So right. if anybody was interested in um, donating to you, then mm -hmm. they would go to your website or call you? or mm -hmm. They can call us or go to our website. We've got I'm a little happy to come pick it up. <laughs> 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 you, you have a group that also mm -hmm. runs some other fundraisers for you, so volunteers are important to you too. Mm -hmm. what are the, what's that group called? the Ave Maria Guild, but it's now called the Wings of Ave Maria, and they're just really a great organization, and they help us and, uh, with many of our different They're going to have a fashion show in May for mm -hmm. us, and they do a lot of really nice events for us. And they also come and just volunteer, right? Oh, yes. They push wheelchairs, you said? and Oh, and if there are resident needs, they take care of those. Actually, Donna, several years ago, there was a gentleman in Ave Maria who had no family, um, and so they ended up paying for his funeral and, and um, taking care of him that way. And so that's just something that not everybody's going to do. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. that's, um, that is such good work, and you're right. I don't know that I would find that anywhere else in town. No. So if I had someone that was coming that I needed to come to a wonderful home for either rehab, nursing, assisted living, adult daycare, or if I needed home care, I should look at your website or I should call you, right? Absolutely. Okay. And look at it for yourself as well. I mean, <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, I, that's where yeah. I was thinking, where, I, where would I want to be? And it would be Ave Maria. That is good to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you all very oh, much. Thank you and for thanks for us. being with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And thank you for being with us today for Inspiring Leaders. We appreciate our guest on today's show, Frank Gattuso and Martha Podesta, both representing Ave Maria Home. Now, if what you've heard on our program today has inspired you to learn more, to donate, and to become involved with Ave Maria Home, then please visit their website, AveMariaHome.org. Now, if you're interested in the air dates of Inspiring Leaders or of any other show on our television station, you can visit GHSTV.org, where we're streaming live 24 hours a day. You can keep up with GHS TV by visiting our website. We hope you'll like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you again for joining us, and be sure to watch our show, Inspiring Leaders, again next month.